thinking outside the box is the prerequisite for innovation, to break the mold, to rise above the status quo, to discover simple and clever solutions not thought of by anyone else before. And so this treadling bus is absolutely not that. I'm sorry, what the fuck even is this? The treadling bus is a classic in a long line of transit bullshit projects that propose to revolutionize transit, usually through some wacky solution that nobody ever needed or wanted before. But this didn't stop it from being included among the 50 best inventions of 2010 by Time magazine. So what exactly is the problem with this treadling bus and how is it connected to Harry Potter? Let's find out after a brief word from today's sponsor, Masterworks. Unlike the Stradling bus, this startup is at the forefront of innovation, revolutionizing a very lucrative yet very antiquated market estimated at $1.7 trillion, one that's more than double the appreciation of the S&P 500 over the last 25 years, while demonstrating zero correlation to the typical investments of stocks and bonds. In other words, the returns have been above average and this market moves on its own, making it a great way to diversify your investments and reduce risk and preserve wealth. But what's even more exciting and relevant is that when the stock market is down and inflation is high, like right now, this market increases in value even more than normal. The only problem is, unless you're an insider or a billionaire, it's been impossible to access. I'm talking about the art market. Masterworks has used tech and finance to disrupt this market, opening it up to investors across the world, just as it's predicted to grow another $900 billion in the next four years. No wonder. The NYT recently celebrated art as bulletproof even in the face of a stock market meltdown. Masterworks is a proprietary data set of the art world so extensive that they're asked by firms like Citi to partner on reports on the global art market, and they select less than 3% of the thousands of paintings they're offered, looking for those with the highest historical appreciation and stability. Then Masterworks acquires the painting and breaks it into shares you can invest in, so diversifying with art fits into your budget, and you can further diversify among different artists and paintings. The folks at Masterworks of course know what they're doing. Their portfolio of $500 million worth of art is up 12% this year on an annualized basis, and their investors have seen over 25% net returns for the last four years in a row. Getting started with Masterworks is very easy. Just visit the website, create an account, and after a few clicks you can start browsing to diversify your portfolio with one of the most stable assets around, especially in light of the recent stock market disturbances and climbing inflation. If you want to take advantage of this and invest in some fine art, there is a waiting list, however, you can skip it and start investing immediately by clicking my link in the description. Thank you for checking out Masterworks, ads like this help support what I do. And now, back to the video. So the straddling bus. On the surface, without thinking about it for too long, it seems like a neat solution. Who wouldn't want to be comfortably whisked along in a spacious elevated bus above the soul-crushing bumper-to-bumper traffic? Who wouldn't want to take part in this amazing transit revolution? Well, stay tuned, I guess. The concept itself was first unveiled in 2010 at the Beijing International High Tech Expo, and by 2016 they actually built a functioning prototype in the city of Qinhuangdao with 300 meters of track and a station. The idea was simple and appealing. Just build two simple tracks on each side of the road and then raise the body of the bus above the cars. Passengers would board at elevated stations along the way. The interior was rather spacious, able to hold around 300 people, about the same amount as two articulated buses crammed full. The idea itself isn't new, by the way. There was a concept like this before, the bus washed landliner, only that would have carried entire buses at high speeds and then dropped them off at set locations. Compared to that, the straddling bus was a more modest, thus more plausible solution. People hailed the straddling bus as a transit revolution, deeming it an innovative solution to traffic. But the straddling bus was no revolution. In fact, it was the ultimate embodiment of the status quo. Allow me to explain. First of all, the concept had some relevant problems that were never solved, that couldn't be solved, since they were fundamental elements of the design. The most obvious problem is space. The straddling bus has to run on wide avenues with at least two lanes per direction. You cannot run it on a normal two-lane street because stuff is in the way. Parking spots, lampposts, signs, garbage bins, benches, pedestrians, balconies even. The system can only function in areas that are separated for the sake of car traffic. This severely limits potential areas of service. I guess what I'm saying is, good luck trying to build a straddling bus in cities not ruined by Robert Moses. Also, the bus is 7 meters wide, which assumes a 3.5 meter lane width, which is not always the case, especially inside cities. Often, lanes are narrowed because wider lanes lead to more speeding and accidents. So you can end up in a situation where one leg of the straddling bus is at the side of the first lane while the other leg is in the middle of the third lane. Also, gotta love how those wide, deep rails go through the crosswalk. It'll be fun accidentally stepping into it and breaking your ankle. A further problem is the bus itself. It's four, four and a half meters tall, which is about the same as a regular double-decker bus. So, theoretically, it should be okay. But the problems start when the city doesn't normally operate double-decker buses and the infrastructure isn't designed around such height. On their 3D render, you can even see a section of road lowered so the straddling bus can pass under a pedestrian overpass. 
it's very silly. And you cannot really decrease the straddling bus's height either. The maximum height of vehicles that can pass under it is 2 meters or less. That basically limits you to personal vehicles only, as even most vans are 2 meters tall. So we do see the problem. You can't go higher because you will bump into stuff, and you can't go lower because cars won't be able to pass below you. You're essentially stuck, sandwiched between two places you really don't want to be. And so imagine a common van, like a Mercedes Sprinter, catching up with a straddling bus. The van will have to tailgate all the way, stuck behind the bus, blocking an entire traffic lane, defeating the entire purpose of having a straddling bus in the first place. Or maybe the van is in front, stuck in a traffic jam, which means the straddling bus is now also stuck in a traffic jam. By the way, boarding was originally envisioned through large lifts that take a bunch of people to and from the station, in and out of the bus. And that's the giveaway right there, that this system was designed by people who have no idea how public transit works. If you've ever taken public transit, you know how elevators are the worst thing you can have if you're looking to exchange a lot of passengers in a short amount of time. There is a reason why subways primarily have stairs and escalators. Other potential issues would just be a pain in the ass. What if someone crashes into the legs of the bus? The whole thing would need to be shut down, traffic stopped, and passengers would need to be evacuated. If this happens while the bus is in the middle, you'll have to close down additional lanes to allow passengers to reach the sidewalk. Walk. Or you can just plop them onto the road underneath, I guess. Yeah, just 300 people casually milling around on the road, underneath the straddling bus right at the accident site. Neat. Also, about those people cutouts. Gotta love how they put a grand total of four in there, just like how there are five at the station, four in the elevator, and one inside the bus. Transit bullshit projects seem to work best when transporting very few people, it seems. I'd like to see a render of morning rush hour when 500 people are trying to get in and out. Also, do notice the cute cubicle and the wide, comfy chairs with armrests even. Compare this to a seat layout of actual mass transit, designed for quick and large-scale passenger flows like a regular bus. And on regular buses, half the space isn't taken up by huge elevators either. As you can see, this threadling bus is not quite space efficient. At least the prototype looked more like an actual transit system, which had normal seats and didn't have the dumb elevators. Now I know what you're thinking. How is all this connected to Harry Potter? You see, the author, she who must not be named, is a centrist liberal. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere with this. And so in the Harry Potter universe, goblins are second class citizens, centaurs are viewed as beasts and are forced into reserves, discrimination against people with non-magical parents is widespread, muggles are viewed as inferior, wizards have their own Guantanamo prison where they torture people, and they keep house elves as slaves. Voldemort and his supremacist ideology or the embodiment of these injustices. He is the logical continuation, if you will. This is contrasted by the heroes and their more egalitarian ideas. The final fight against Voldemort is therefore not just a magical duel, but also a clash of ideologies. By defeating Voldemort, you also defeat his supremacist ideas, changing society for the better. But there's a problem. As I've mentioned, the author is a centrist liberal. As such, she is deathly afraid of change. Actual, meaningful change. Thus, at the end of the Harry Potter series, Voldemort gets defeated through some bullshit one mechanics minutia, and then it's back to business as usual. Goblins remain second class citizens, centaurs are still kept in reserves, magic Guantanamo stays open, and house elves remain in chattel slavery. That's because JK Rowling clings to the status quo as if her life depended on it. She views it as sacred and untouchable, which then forces her to awkwardly try and work around it instead of making meaningful changes. Which is the exact same thinking that went into the straddling bus. Why do we need a bus that glides above the road? Because the road is full of cars. Well then, how about we take a regular bus and designate a bus lane in each direction? Oh no, that would be traffic reduction. We cannot do that. That would mean changing the status quo of car dependency. So let's just try and awkwardly shimmy along the sides of the road and build out all this expensive infrastructure like elevated stations because a few cars were in the way. By reducing car traffic, we wouldn't need expensive bullshit like these overpasses either. We could also get rid of the inconvenience caused by traffic congestion. But instead, we get this in the beginning of their video occupying resources of roads and with heavy pollution, referring to regular buses. Oh, but of course, won't somebody think of the road resources and heavy pollution by buses? Don't look at the giant SUVs and big-ass sports cars or that kilometers long sea of cars in front of you, we need to take those damn buses off the road, lest we accidentally change the car-centric status quo by painting a bus lane on each side. Which is the actual solution to the problem these treadling bus tried to solve. Just paint a damn bus lane. In the end, the straddling bus of course failed by virtue of being a really stupid idea, and also due to complaints filed against the developers by investors on suspicion of embezzlement, which ended in 32 arrests. It's almost as if this whole project was just a grift to milk global investors and potentially lend a contract with a desperate local government. Almost. But now this straddling bus is back, if you can imagine, only significantly dumber. The mastermind of this idea is Dahir Insad, which is apparently some engineering firm? Uh, hard to tell. Addressing city mayors, buy our system, write to our gmail for details. Slight upgrade over the straddling bus's hotmail address. Oh no, what is this channel? Oh no. Oh no! What is this? What is going on here? What are you buying, honey? Flash.
Oh yeah, now the indoors version. I too like giving cashiers carbon monoxide poisoning. Wait, they don't even put your bags into your trunk? You just put it in the passenger seat? Oh, the flying train, of course. It's like an airplane, but it also needs train tracks to function. <laughs> if the Christian interpretation of hell is real, then I'm pretty sure it looks something like this. Okay, alright, I think I'm done for today. Thank you for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe and do check out my Patreon if you wish to support me making more content like this and others as well. And I'll be seeing you next time.